Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so um, in a first video on solving differential equations with Laplace transforms, I provided you three very useful and nice examples. Um, and the first two of those three examples, all in that same video, uh, were uh, on second degree non-homogeneous and homogeneous respectively, and then the final example was on a fourth degree. So um, they got progressively more sophisticated. Uh, and here we're really getting sophisticated and fancy because, well, in this second and perhaps final uh, video on solving differential equations with Laplace transforms, we're going to solve a system. Yes, you heard me right, a system of differential equations. And of course, we're going to do it using Laplace transforms. So let's get on with it. Um, how about this system, right? Now, as opposed to when we're solving a single differential equation, uh, when we're solving a system, we're going to have two functions, right? Like, remember, uh, in those three examples, uh, in each of them, even in the one that was a fourth order, it was just one function. It was y and its derivatives. But here we have y and its derivatives and x and its derivatives and therefore a system, right? Okay, and therefore, uh, to start, we need to uh, define not just the Laplace transform of y, but also the Laplace transform of um, x, right? And uh, for reasons I mentioned uh, there in that first video on solving differential equations with Laplace transforms, three examples, right? Remember? Yeah, so there um, I mentioned y, uh, the initial... Um, value uh, has to be given for t equals zero and so i'm not going to say it here i'm going to incentivize watching that video um right uh, in case you're dying in curiosity and um in case you can live with it well let's test your resolve um all right all right but yeah as i said to start we need to define uh both the laplace transform for the function x and the function y and i suppose for a reason that has to do with the fact that x comes before y as um, f comes before g, we've chosen to name them in this manner, right? Uh, but otherwise, you know, just as I said there in that first video, it's nice to have handy uh, the formula for the Laplace transform of uh, y prime and the formula for the Laplace transform of y double prime. y prime y double prime or x prime x double prime or f prime f double prime doesn't matter how you write it but it's nice to have those uh, formulas that i had um shared with you there in that first video uh with the three examples right and of course those formulas uh for the laplace transform of um y prime and y double prime uh, both of those I dedicated videos to and I showed you how to derive in two separate videos uh, Both of those formulas in their own individual videos, so you can check those out for more details, but Yeah, because I already like you know like walked you through uh, the formulas carefully There in that first video. I'm not going to do it as much here And you should also know that uh, the next thing we're going to do is take the Laplace transform of uh, both sides of this first equation and do the same with both sides of this second equation and so uh, we get on with that um, and uh, for the first uh, equation it's going to turn out to be this and very quickly quick reminder is that like the Laplace transform for um, x prime for example is going to be s times capital F of s because yeah and then it's going to be minus um, x of zero but x of 0 is 0, and that's why you don't see minus 0 here, and uh, you get it, you get it, you get it. Okay, otherwise, um, yeah, for uh, this, you need uh, minus uh, y of 0 in this part, but y of 0 is also 0, and that's why you don't see it. Otherwise, you know, this here is that by definition, and this here is that uh, by definition. But yeah, what I've said very quickly, if you missed it, is that like I did apply uh, that formula for the Laplace transform of the derivative both in this part and in this part. It's just that like um, these two guys 
which would have been subtracted from this and this respectively are both zero which is why you don't see them there yeah okay otherwise you know we need to know the laplace transform of sine and uh, basic things like that and so that's that for the first equation but uh, we can make it more convenient this first equation by grouping the capital F's and the capital G's and um, so if we do that then we can write it a bit more succinctly if you want to call it that in this manner right like okay and so like you know we've paired these two and then taken out um, taken out a, a, G, a G from um, uh, them pair these two right and then them pair we've taken out an F from right capital F yeah you get it you get it it's basic algebra like I shouldn't uh, have to walk you through that like too carefully okay now um yeah right like and um okay so clearly we've uh, applied the formula for the Laplace transform of the second derivative and uh, also for the first derivative but obviously the second derivative of x and the first derivative of y and uh, the impact there is obviously whether um, capital F is involved in uh, capital G G's involved and they are involved where they need to be and um, this too we could write a bit more conveniently um, uh, like this and so now we have like our system uh, translated in terms of Laplace transforms but still just a system I notice that this is this is a system in two unknowns the two unknowns are capital F and capital G and so like you know we've seen a system of equations in two unknowns as long as we have two equations and the two unknowns we can solve them and there are a variety of uh, ways uh, of ways <laughs> of solving a system of two equations and two unknowns and one of them is uh, Kramer's rule and that's what I'm going to choose to use here and I have a video in my algebra one videos dedicated to uh, teaching you Kramer's rule so I'm not going to talk about Kramer's rule details here you can watch that video um, but yeah um, first thing you need to do is uh, find uh, the determinant of the matrix of coefficients where the coefficients here in this case are anything but capital F of S and capital G of S and so like you know that's how like the coefficient in this part for example is this the coefficient in this part is this and uh, the coefficient in this part and so this is uh, the determinant of the matrix of coefficients right and um, so that's one of the things that you need to do for Kramer's rule and so when we're um, solving for um, solving for um, capital F, what we're gonna need to do in addition to this uh, determinant here, which we've uh, called delta. In addition to this, what we need to do is also calculate um, the determinant of a two by two matrix, uh, where it's almost like this matrix only. For capital F, we replace this column with this here as a column, right? For capital F. And then for capital G, we take this same guy again, but for capital G, we replace this column uh, with this taken as a column. But that's already telling you more details of um, Kramer's rule than um, I should, just so that you know you're not like totally lost in what remains of this video, but like. Yeah, like, as I said, I have a video dedicated to Kramer's rule, so check that out. Um, but yeah, um, two by two determinants, I have at least a couple of videos on those, and um, this is how that goes. Um, there's a little bit more algebra to do to make it nicer, so we do that, right? Now, delta this here is the determinant of the matrix of coefficients right there, right? Okay. Uh, and as I said, this is not the only determinant you need to do in order for you to find um, capital F of S via Kramer's rule. You need to uh, take the uh, determinant of uh, the matrix of coefficients, right? And so basically take this and put it in the denominator. And in the numerator will be the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix where... Um, as I revealed more than I should for capital F you replace this column which is this here with this taken as a column and for capital G you replace this column with this taken as a, a column since here we're doing it for F 
we're replacing this here with that taken as a column and then of course these vertical bars mean determinant so we need to calculate this determinant and this is going to be the numerator where the denominator is delta this other determinant right okay all right all right all right again i've um handheld you through uh kramer's rule way more than i needed to or shoulda um but shoulda woulda coulda woulda <laughs> whatever right let's just finish um all right so um um yeah like and so you get to this spot right and so you're like oh yeah where to from here uh more fun and that for you means partial fraction decomposition uh but for me it means that i already know partial fraction decomposition so i'm gonna uh, skip that detail and this ain't homework for me. I'm just like giving you free fun math lessons and so there that goes and um, Yeah, so by using partial fraction decomposition by that I mean doing lots of fun um, computation <laughs> you uh, Show that this here is the same as this. I have lots of videos on partial fraction decomposition uh, So you can check them out if you need to learn on that but then otherwise you know like uh, easy recognition of inverse Laplace transforms of these individual guys um, will also go a long way and that's the other um, prerequisite to like you know solving differential equations with Laplace transforms right and so like for example this here is like a fifth sign T and so on right like so like yeah like and yeah and so only thing we have left to do to say we're done is we need to find capital G, right? And, well, how does it go? I already told you Kramer's rule, right? Like, and this time what you're going to do is, uh, and that determinant that we had had here, you replace, as I said, the G columns with this. And that's what you see clearly. The F columns are unaltered, right? Like, because this time we're solving for uh uh, G, but uh, just as before when we're solving for F, uh, that um, determinant of um, two by two matrix of coefficients, right? Like that's that delta, that delta is in the denominator and it's this uh, determinant that's going to be the numerator. And that's clearly what this math says right there. But just like, you know, like, like, you know, like wanting to help you out. Like it turns out that this determinant, this two by two determinant is simply minus S and so you have delta downstairs in the denominator, right? Like, and if we recall what delta was, which is this, we get to this. This is what G is. And so where to from here? You named it partial fraction decomposition, right? Where else? And so then once you do that, so more fun, you show that this is the same as this here. And then again, once you're here, you need to be able to recognize your inverse Laplace transforms. And um, yeah, things I did in the first video will be helpful. In particular, I highlighted one formula from our good old Laplace transform days when we we're first studying them that might be handy when you're going from things like this to this. So check out that uh, first video on solving uh, differential equations. So watch those three examples is basically what I'm preaching because, well, at this point, you've finished watching this. So the only other thing I could have said is watch this video again, which is, well, you know, maybe valuable, so you should do it. But otherwise, you know, move on with your life as should I, as I should. Um, <laughs> keep watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care.